Hey, it's Denzo here from Tweak Town. I'm in Brisbane, Australia at the UMART online computer store where Gigabyte is sponsoring a overclocking workshop. For this workshop, the main board is the Gigabyte 990F XAUD7. Because these particular boards and CPUs run at particularly low temperatures when we're overclocking with liquid nitrogen, we need to insulate this board very, very well. First of all, we're going to take off the heatsink assembly. We'll flick the board over. You'll see they've got simple screws. Unlike those old push pins, which can be quite tricky to get out, we can just unscrew them very quickly like this. Now we've got the screws off, flick the board back over and we can lift the heatsink assembly straight off. We need to insulate right around the socket area thoroughly so we don't end up with any condensation issues causing a short which could cut down our overclocking session or potentially even kill the components. I'll put some thermal paste, or sorry, thermal grease in and around the socket. Most of you who have seen my articles before would have seen me do this process. I simply use a paintbrush, which makes an easy application around the socket. Coating all of these little circuits nice and well to make sure we have no issues when we start overclocking. There's nothing worse than getting all set up spending hours and a lot of money doing this, all to find within half an hour of starting we have an issue and we have to pull down and start all over again. So it pays to be very thorough with your preparation and that will give you a successful benching session. I'll continue doing this and we'll also have a look in and around the PCIe slots and also in how we install all the components as well as the liquid nitrogen pots. Now that we've insulated around the socket area and the back of the board with Vaseline, I've used some closed cell foam insulation around the socket area to help stop any air getting in, which could cause our condensation, which could lead to a short between our components and obviously upset our overclocking session. I've also used paper towels in around the socket, as you can see. This is to help to absorb any water that may happen for any gaps that may happen or get missed. I've also pre put the paste onto the CPU. I'm going to get ready now to mount the pot. I'm using a Kingpin Cooling Venom CPU pot which is quite a large piece of copper as you can see here. I'll place that onto the CPU. With the mounting of this particular CPU pot I'm actually going to put the insulation over the top first. I'll slide that down. It's a little bit fiddly, as you can see, but just work it down gently. And we'll get that over that copper base. Now that we've got that on, we can grab the top part of the pot, slide that through the insulation. We've got the mounting holes at the top, pop the threads through and just gently work that down and it'll slide into place as you can see like that. From here it's very straightforward. We've got our mounting hard hardware. Pop the caps on. We have our springs. Top caps. And then we've got our locking nuts. And we'll just tighten those up to all four sides. And we've got our CPU and our pot all mounted and ready to go. With everything mounted and insulated, and with the motherboard now running, it's time to bring the pot down to temperature. Currently, we're at 29.8 degrees above zero. I'm going to start pouring in liquid nitrogen. 
and we'll start bringing this pot down to hopefully around minus 175 degrees. As you can see, the temperature is now starting to drop. Down to 15. Down to 10. And we'll also see how many liters it takes to go from above zero or ambient temperature down to the maximum temperature of liquid nitrogen. We're now in the negatives. About half a litre down and we've dropped approximately 40 degrees. We'll keep this topping up this pot. Just approaching minus 50. With less than one litre, we've dropped 100 degrees now, or very much approaching that. Just approaching minus 100, still with our first litre of liquid nitrogen. That's the last of the first litre.
making a fair old noise now. Slowly approaching minus 170. Minus 176, minus 177. Minus 180. As there is some heat load here, onto the CPU and onto the pot, we're not going to be able to fall obviously all the way to the maximum temperatures of liquid nitrogen into the low 190s. But minus 181 is still reasonably impressive. From here, we'll start to have a little bit of an overclock session and we'll see what the maximum frequencies we can get out of this particular CPU.